can feel your mighty power It is moving in this place da 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 Christian family and choice radio 92.9 FM your life your salvation your choice inviting you to get something to write with and something to write on let us pray hallelujah 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 father on tonight we come to glorify you we come to magnify you we come to exalt your name on high oh god because of who you are father god there is none that is greater than you heavenly father we thank you for your son jesus christ we just thank you for jesus because if it wasn't for your son giving up his life where would we be on today father so we thank you we thank you for salvation we thank you for peace we thank you for the love that you have shred apart in our hearts oh god we just thank you but father if it wasn't for your word father god that come to give us this life oh god that living word lord god that living water oh god we thank you for it father father we thank you for everyone that is out there on tonight that are listening father god we thank you for them we thank you for our brand new listeners tonight lord god we ask you lord god to open up their understanding to enlighten them into your word lord god let them be able to understand exactly what you are saying to them father god open up their ears so it will be attentive lord god we thank you lord god so they will receive it oh god in their hearts lord god we thank you we thank you for 92.9 father we thank you for making a way on this station lord god we thank you lord god for the word that goes forth on this station lord god we thank you for minister stricker lord god we thank you for his faithfulness lord god we thank you for his obedience unto you father to doing exactly what you have called him to do before the foundation of the world father and we thank you we thank you for our man of god on tonight lord god we thank you for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the revelation, Father God, that you have given him. We thank you, Father God, for brand new revelation, Lord God. We thank you for this word that's going to go forth tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Father. Father, we take nothing for granted. We thank you for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you. We are forever more grateful, Lord God. And Father, as we be prepared to hear your word, Lord God, your word has already fell on good grounds and not deaf ears. And Father, once again, we take nothing for granted. We just thank you on tonight. We love you. We glorify you. We magnify you in no other name but in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Amen. Glory to God. God is still a good God. And the good thing about God being good, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank God for his word that's still alive and powerful and sharper than any towards his sword. Father, we thank you for the Apostle Paul and his you. writing, writing to his son in the faith. Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, 
and rightly divide the word of God from a child there was known this all the scripture was able to make the wise Solomon one of the wisest men of his time says the glory of God to conceal a thing as the honor of a king to search it out the early church the Berean Christians they searched the scriptures out daily to see if these things were so get something to write with not something to write on unless what God is saying to us in his holy written precious word second Corinthians chapter 12 let's start there tonight and see what God is saying to us second Corinthians chapter 12 the Apostle Paul is given credit for writing this book but the Holy Ghost is behind it because he's saying his writing holy that the Spirit of God give him all these things everything he have received he got it by revelation of Jesus Christ the Holy Ghost is the author of this book holy men of God speak as the Spirit of God was upon them second Corinthians chapter 12 let's pick it about verse 1 it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory I'll come to visions and revelation of the Lord I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago whether in the body I cannot tell whether out of the body I cannot tell God know it such a one was caught up in the deterred heaven I know such a man whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell God know it how he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. Now Paul in this vision, in this time here, he left his body and went up into third heaven. Think about how far the Apostle Paul leave and went when you look at the expert tell us that the sun is 93 million miles away from the earth and that's have to do with the first heaven. We had to go to the second heaven. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, and wicked spirits in high places or in heavenly places. So there's a middle heaven. So he passed that second heaven and gone way up in the third heaven. We're going to read those verses again. Way up in the third heaven. And what he saw there, he said what he saw it was unspeakable. The Apostle John, when he went up there, he, I think he should, Apostle John should do what the Apostle Paul said. He says unspeakable, but John say. He saw one sat in the throne look like a saddest stone on a topaz and <laughs> he just couldn't describe it but Paul said I saw things that was unspeakable let's read those verses again and see what God is saying to us second Corinthians chapter 12 and look at verse 1 it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory I'll come to visions and revelation of the Lord I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago whether in the body I cannot tell whether out of the body I cannot tell God know it such a one was caught up in the third heaven I knew such a man whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell God know it how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to order now think about it way up there in the third heaven look at the book, the book of Job and see what he's saying there up in the third heaven way up there Paul was caught up in the third heaven look at the book of Job and see what God is saying to us the book of Job chapter 1 and let's see what God is saying to us. Job chapter 1. And here the time here. Look at us. Look at a few verses from Job chapter 1. Now remember, Paul was caught up in the third heaven. Paul could be described as the chief difference apostle because he wrote most of the new covenant. He wrote from the book of Romans to the book of Hebrews. So he get quite a bit of revelations when you look at Jesus started his public ministry the first person he recruited was Simon Peter then Andrew his brother then James and John and Levi and others and so on Paul came lately but Paul said I work harder than those who were possible before me and God used him mightily because of the abundance of revelation he said it was given to him a thorn in the flesh to buffet him and so on so he was caught up in the deterred heaven and God gave him quite a bit of revelation in his writing he said thank God I speak in tongues more than you all well, he that speak in an unknown tongue, speak it unto God. Albeit in the spirit, he speak it mystery. So he spent quite a bit of time speaking to God. And God gave him quite a bit of revelation. Now look at this here in the book of Job. Look at these six books. Job chapter 1, look at verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them. The Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou, Satan? Answered and said, The Lord, I'm going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. The Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in all the earth, a perfect and upright one that fear God and you evil. Now think about this. Now he is using his perverted name here. So Satan went away up in the deterred heaven. You ever wonder about that? 
Paul said, I know a man in Christ above 14 years, but in the body or out of the body, such a one was caught up in the third heaven. Look at this here. Satan way up in the third heaven. Is Satan a good guy or a bad guy? Now we have this. Look at that. Look at those verses. Look at those verses. Pick a look at verse 6 again. Just look at that little part of it. Look at that part of it again. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them. So right among all those, when you look around the setting around the throne, the Father God sitting on the throne, they have four and twenty elders around the throne, then they have these four seraphim, one of a face of a lion, face of a calf, one of a face of a man, and one of a face of an eagle, and around the throne and worshipping God day and night, who holy, holy, holy. And the sons of God came to present the sons of God and angels come to send and Satan is with them. So where up there, evil is present. Can you see that? We're going to read that again. Paul was, this is some, this is some kind of revelation. Now where up in the third heaven? I know a man in Christ about 40 years caught up into paradise. And look at this here. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them. So way up in the third heaven, evil is up there. Look at that, the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou, Satan? Answered and said the Lord, From going to and fro in the world and not walking up and down in it. But the first of the revelation there also that Satan is not omnipresent, as our God is omnipresent. He's not omniscient, as our God is omniscient. He's an un omnipotent, as our God is omnipotent. He's not. Because if he was, he would know all things. He doesn't know all things. Because one of the part where Samson's great strength lied out, he used Delilah to find where his great strength lied and pay a lot of money, 1,100 pieces of silver each of them paid to find out where his great strength lied. He doesn't know. When he was looking for the baby Jesus, he says, slow all the children from two years old and under. He doesn't know. Kill all of them and we'll find it. Find the baby Jesus. He doesn't know. He's not omniscient. He's not omnipotent. So you see, he's going to and fro. So when he's two, he's not fro. When he's up, he's not down. Can you see? But he caught up up there. Evil. Way up in the third heaven. Look at chapter 2, Job chapter 2. And let's see it again. Way up in the third heaven, evil is present. Job chapter 2, look at verse 1. Again, so this is another time. The first time there in Job uh, 1 and verse 6, that's the first time. This is again. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them and presented themselves before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, From whom is come thou? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro and walking up and down in it. So see, this is again, he gone back up there. So evil is way up there. So he's where one time the sons of God came to present himself, he's there. And this time of the year, we look at it seems to be a lot of evil activities. As we get closer to the end time, there's an increase of evil activities. Evil men will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So there's a day when the sons of God him sees there. Again, look at this, look at that verse again, chapter 2, verse 1. Again, there was the day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? Now notice this is his perverted name. Satan, the dragon, the devil, and the serpent. Those are the perverted name. His given name is Lucifer. Can you see that? But way up there with the perverted name Satan. And God calling him by that perverted name Satan. You didn't get that. We have to read that again. Somebody, you never see that before. I just show you that. Ah, look at that. Look at verse chapter 2 and verse 1 again. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present them before the Lord. Satan came also among them and before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord said unto Satan, From whence come his doubt? Evil. His presence. Can you see that? Look at the book of Isaiah. Evil is present. We live in a time we as Christians need to be informed. You know my favorite scripture. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people, not people, but my people. Way up in the third heaven, evil is present. There's a day when the sons of God came, Satan came also. And God addressed him as Satan. From whence come his doubt, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. So when he's two, he's not fro. When he's up, he's not down. Isaiah chapter 14, evil is present. Notice the tense, evil is. Present tense, evil is present. The title of this series, evil is present. Isaiah chapter 14. And let's pick up the 12 verse. Isaiah chapter 14. Let's pick up the 12 verse. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. 
How did it cut down to the ground which it weakened the nation? Thou hast said in thy heart, I'll ascend above the heavens, I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God, I'll sit upon the mount of the congregation the sides of the north, I'll ascend above the heights of the cloud, I'll be like the most high God. Yet shall thou but be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall now really look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, and did shake the kingdoms, and made the world a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, and opened not the house of his prisoners? We have to read those verses again. Notice where this take place up in the third heaven. It started up there. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. That's his given name. So way up there, sin is present. Evil is present. Look at it again. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How thou art cut down to the ground which is weakened in the nation. Thou art said in thy heart. So way up there in his heart, evil is present. Evil is present. I'll ascend above the heavens. I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'll sit also upon the mount of the congregation of the sides of the north. I'll ascend above the heights of the cloud. Notice, notice that any time you get people in that sort of that, that kind of Satan, I will, I, 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 I'll exalt my throne. I'll be like the most God. I'll, I do that. You see, that kind of behavior. Look at it again. For thou was said in thy heart, I'll ascend above the heavens. So mean he was below the heaven. I'll exalt my throne above the stars. So he was born of the stars. I'll sit also upon the mount of the country sides of the north. I'll ascend above the heights of the clouds. So he was under the cloud. I'll be like the most high God. Rebellion. When the throne room up in the third heaven. I'll be like the most high God. Yet shall thou shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see shall now really look upon thee and consider saying, Is this the man that make the earth to tremble? I did shake the kingdoms, and had made a world a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, and opened not the house of his prisoners. Way up there, evil is present. Luke chapter 10. I have a red later edition. The head of the church is speaking. The apostle Luke is recording. Jesus recruited 12 disciples and became apostle. Then he recruited another assembly, and he sent them forth to do his will and his work in the earth realm. Look at two verses, Luke chapter 10. Evil is present. Hallelujah. As we look at this month, that is an increase of evil activities. We have to be aware of it. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Luke chapter 10. Look at two verses. Look at 17 and 18. Luke chapter 10. 10, look at verses 17 and 18. And the seventh returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils or demons are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Notice, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Evil is present way up in the third heaven. Satan fell. Look at that. Look at those two verses again. The same return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils or the demons are subject unto us through thy name. He said unto him, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Evil. Way up in the third heaven. Evil is present. The book of Revelation, chapter 12. We had something to write with and something to write on and hear what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. Hallelujah. You better know as we come towards the end time, you better know. Say it before and I want to say it again. Those folks who are going down, when you arrive down, you're not coming back. You have to be aware of this. You have to know. God give us this and he wants us to know. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of God. We want you to study. Solomon, one of the wisest men of his time, says the glory of God to conceal a thing and is the honor of a king to search it out. He put it there because he wants us to know. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Revelation chapter 12, let's pick it up at the seventh verse. Evil is present. Hallelujah. Look at the seventh verse. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought on his angels and prevailed not, neither was found any more found any more in heaven, any place found in heaven. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. 
he was cast out into the earth and his angels was cast out them notice he was cast, he cast out in the earth he was up in the heaven but this where this fight was taking place this is not in the, the third heaven this is not in paradise this is in the heavenlies there coming a time when Satan is not going to be, be occupied in heavenlies wrestling not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world wicked spirits in high or heavenly places they were scattered oh, look at, go back to that verse again verse 7 there was war in heaven Michael and his angel fought with a dragon and the dragon and his angels prevailed not neither there was place found any more in heaven there would be a great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out of them. Notice these two opposing parts, the good side and bad side. Benevolent and malevolent spirits up in the heavenlies. I heard a voice saying in the heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God, the power of his Christ. The accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God. How often? Look at that. Well, our God is up in the third heaven. So he leave the second heaven and he went up to the third heaven accusing everything that you done wrong. He taking it up there and accusing you before the fact. Look at, verse, look at that verse again. Look at that 10 verse. I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren. Notice not brethren, but our brethren. That's us. He's not accusing he, the devil and his crowd out there. That those working king were that. No, the church people, Christians. Yes, he already have those. Those folks who not say we have those, not accuse them of anything. It's us, the church. Look at it. The accuser of our brethren, day and night, from January to December, on and on and on, accusing them day and night before the Father. They overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies, and they love not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens. Notice heavens. Plural, that's the third heaven and the second heaven. Rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them, warn to you inhabitants of the earth, that's us down here, and the sea, for the devil has come down on to you, having a great wrath, because he noted that his time is short. We're going to read those verses again. Notice that fight taken up there. Presence is evil. Evil is present. Evil is presence. Look at that seven verse. Go back up to the seven verse. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither there was place found any more in heaven. The great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. The whole world. All those folks in Asia, in Africa, and in Europe, all the Americas, the whole world. The world is the people. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and baptize shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. The world. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Look at that ninth verse. The great dragon was cast out, old serpent, which is called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. That's where we are. His angels were cast out with him. I heard a voice in heaven say, saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren, the accuser of our brethren, the accuser of our brethren. Every time you do something wrong, he take it to accusing you. Accuse of our brethren. Look at that. The accuse of our brethren cast down, which is a which accuse them. Look how look how often. Look how often. Day and night. So Satan have access to the throne. We saw that in the book of Job. There's a day when the sons of God came to present his head before the last Satan came also. Well, you could see it here also. And this is a new covenant book. Uh, day and night. Look at that. Look at that verse. Look at that ten verse again. Look at the 10 verse. Put your finger on the 10 verse again. I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now is come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. The accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God, our God with a big G, heavenly Father, our God, day and night. Huh? And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens. Notice heavens. But an S. And you that dwell in them, woe unto the inhabitants of the hood, that's those folks down here, and the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having a great wrath, because he knows that he have, his time is short. Can you see that? Look at something else. Look at Second Peter. Look at something in Second Peter. Evil is present. Look at Second Peter. Got somebody to write with and somebody to write on. Evil is present. And you have to know this. We. Look at this. 
Look at this here. Second Peter chapter 2. Look at the fourth verse. Put your finger on the fourth verse. Evil is present. Way up in the third heaven. Look at this. Look at this. Second Peter chapter 2. Look at verse 4. For if God spare not the angel that sin, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So angels way up in hell, so evil way up there. They sin up in heaven. Huh? They sin up in heaven. Can you see that? Can you see that? Satan. How do I fall no Lucifer from heaven? I beheld Satan's life fall from heaven. Evil is present. Look at it. Look at that. Look at that fourth verse. For if God spare not the angels with an S, that sin, so they, they sin up in heaven. Look at that. But cast them down to hell and deliver them unto chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Evil is present. Look at the book of Jude. Small book before Revelation. Way up there. Way up there. Rebellion in the third heaven. Cast them down. He exalts himself. I'll be like the most high God. I'll exalt myself. I'll be above the clouds. I, 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 but be cast down to hell. Angels that sin. Well, the angels came from heaven. Those that sin. Those that fell with Satan. Cast them down. So right up there, that rebellion taking place up. Evil is present. Jude, a one chapter book. Look at the six verse. Look at the six verse. Jude chapter one, look at verse six. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he reserved into everlasting chain under darkness, unto the judgment of that great day. That is something. That is some facet of revelation. Way up in the third heaven, almighty God, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent God. Satan rebel up there. How do I fall from heaven? The angel that sin cast them down from heaven to hell. Look at it. Look at that sixth verse. Evil. Way up there. It's in the heavenlies and in the heavens. Look at the sixth verse. The angels which kept not their first senses but left their own habitation. He reserved into everlasting chain under darkness. Under the judgment of that great day. The book of Genesis. Chapter 6. Get something to write with and something to write on and hear what God is saying to us in his holy written precious words. You read some of these things, you see some of these passages of revelation. I mean as you walk the street, traveling the train and the buses, as you walk into your building, evil is present. Genesis chapter 6 and let's pick it up at verse 1. Genesis chapter 6. Let's pick it up at verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth that daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fear, and they took them wives of all that they choose. And the Lord said that my spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. All after that the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and and it bear them churn, the same become mighty men of old men of renown. Look at verse 5. God saw that the weakness of man was great in the earth. God saw the, look at that, the weakness was great in the earth. And every imagination and thought of his heart was only evil. How often? Evil is present. Way back then, look at it. Look at that fifth verse. God saw that the weakness of man was great in the earth and earth. And every imagination and thought of his heart was only evil continuing. And repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and had grieved him to his heart. And the Lord said, I'll destroy man for whom I've created from off the face of the earth, both man and beasts and creeping things and the fowl of the air. I've repented what has made them. Look at verse 8. But no. So there's evil all around. But no. Evil is present. We have to read those verses again. We're going to read those verses again. Evil is present. Look at that. Everybody. It repented God. Only, only evil. Look at verse 5. God saw the weakness of man was great in the earth. And every imagination thought of his heart was only evil continually. Evil is present. He repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and he grieved him to his heart. And the Lord said, I'll destroy man whom I have created from off the face of the earth. Both man and beast and creeping things and fowls of the air. It repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 
the process of time, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. But look at that. Continually, everybody, evil is present. All he might, look, at, look at those verses. Look at that fifth verse again. God saw that the weakness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination and thought of his heart was only evil continually. Ah, it repented the Lord that he had made man. Man, that is something. Not very long ago, you see, he made man. Everything he made was perfect, was very good. Made man in his image and his likeness, and everything was very good. Look at Evil is present. Genesis chapter 18. And look at this picture here. Now, Lot and Abraham was dwelling together, but they so much had the stuff of the wealth was so much that they couldn't dwell together, separate one. And there was strife between Abraham and Lot. They herdsmen and the cattlemen were striving. So Abraham said, let's separate one from another. So Lot threw Sodom and Gomorrah, but the people of Sodom and Gomorrah was exceedingly wicked above all people. But Lot was there, and God said, you're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And here is Abraham interceding for his nephew Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. And look at, the, look at this picture. Evil is present. That which was is that which is that which shall be done is that which is done is nothing new on this. And look at this. You separate one from another. Abraham went one way. Lot went another way. So Lot is down in Sodom and Gomorrah. And God said, we're not going to hide from Abraham. What are you going to do? Because Abraham will become a mighty man and a great nation. So you're going to tell Abraham what he's going to do. So you tell him you're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham now wanted to intercede for his nephew Lot. But look at this picture. Evil is present. Look at this. Genesis chapter 18. Look at the 23rd verse. Pick it up with the 23rd verse. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? For adventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou destroy? Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are there? Be it far from thee to do after that man to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. Be it far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I'll spare all the place for their sake. So just give me fifty righteous people in this city. Think about how many people live dwelling in that city. If I could get fifty righteous, I'm going to save the entire place for fifty. And he said, What about forty-five? He said, I'll save it for forty-five. What about 40? I'll save it for 40. What about 30? I'll save it for 30. What about 20? I'll save it for 20. What about 10? I'll save it for 10. You see, could find, couldn't even find out amount of people there. Evil is present everywhere. And you have to drag Lot and his two daughters. His wife looked back, became a pillar of salt over there. Everybody else, evil is present. That which was that which is, that which shall be done, that which is done. Think about that. Couldn't find 50 righteous people in the city. Couldn't get 45. Couldn't get 40. Couldn't get 30. Couldn't get 20. Couldn't get 10. Think about that. Evil is present. Way up in the third heaven. Way up in the heaven leaves and up in the third heaven. Everything. Evil is present. First Kings. Chapter 18, get something to write with and something to write on. This time of the year, there's an increase of evil activities. And you better put on your whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles or the tricks of the devil. Submit yourself to God, resist mm -hmm. the devil and he'll flee. And here is Elijah the Tishbite in Israel with the capital Samaria to take that entire capital of Samaria and they worship all over with Baal worship. But look at this. Look at, look at how much evil is present. That's what I want to get you to see. Couldn't find any right to destroy the whole world. Just know he can save everybody else after go. In Sodom, could you find 50 righteous? I'll save it for 50 righteous. Could you, what about four? I'll save it for 45. 40, I'll save it for 40. 30, I'll save it for 30. 20, I'll do that too. Evil is present. You just think about what we live in as we come towards the end time. Evil men will wax worse and worse, deceiving as we come towards the end time. The escalation of evil activities. 18, 1 Kings chapter 18, and look at Elijah with the prophets of Baal. But look at this picture. 
evil is, present tense. First Kings chapter 18, let's pick it up at the 19th verse. First Kings chapter 18, let's pick it up at the 19th verse. Now therefore send and gather me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the grove four hundred, which eat at Jezebel table. Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, and gather all the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people, and said, How long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him, but if Baal, follow him. And all the people answered him not a word. Look at the 22nd verse. Put your finger on the 22nd verse. Look at that verse. Look at the 22nd verse. And then he said, Elijah said unto the people, I, even I only am remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal prophets are 450 men. Think about, think about the amount of darkness surrounding this one man. Think about it. I only one for God. Evil is present. Evil is present and pre present. Look at it. Look at that 22nd verse. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only am remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal prophets are 450 men. And then Jezebel have another 400 in reserve. If we run out of prophets, we're going to get some more. Can you see that? You didn't see that. We have to read those verses again. You didn't see it. We have to read those verses again. Look how darkness is that thick you could cut it with a knife. That much evil. Evil is present. I just feel so sorry for some people who are walking, living in a fool's paradise, going up the downstairs. They don't know what you do. Evil is present. Look at it. Look at those verses. Again. Look at verse 19. Therefore, send me and gather me all Israel unto Mount Camel, unto the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophets of the Grove 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. They have sent unto all the throne of Israel and gather all the prophets together unto Mount Camel. Elijah said unto all the people, that how long shall you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And all the people answered not a word. Look at the 22nd verse. Then said Elijah unto the people, Ah, he might remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophet are 450 men. Look what David saying here. In the 55th Psalm. Pres evil is present. David a man after my own heart, the sweet psalmist of Israel. Look what he writing here. Look what he writing here. And this is a picture of the church. Look what David wrote, the 55th Psalm. Get something to write with and something to write on and hear what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. Hallelujah. The 55th Psalm, and the Bible said the Holy Ghost speak to by the mouth of David, the holy men of God spake as the Spirit of God was upon him. So God gave him this information to give to us, the body of Christ. The 55th Psalm, pick it up at verse 1. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I moan in my complaint and make a noise because of the voices of the enemy. Be uh, the enemy because the oppression of the wicked, because they cast iniquity upon me, and they wrath, they hate me. <clears throat> my heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling come upon me. Horrors have overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, that I will fly away to be at rest. Oh, that I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. See, Lord, I would hasten my escape from the windy storms and from the tempest. Destroy your Lord and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night, they go about upon the walls thereof. Mischiefs are, are also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness in the midst thereof, and deceit and guile depart not from her streets. Look at verse 12. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. <laughs> Evil is present. For it was not the enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me, that magnified himself against me, then would I hid myself from him. But, put your finger on but. Look at the 13 word, but was thou a man, my equal, my guide, my acquaintance. Whoa, because we took sweet counsel together, we walk into the house of the Lord in company. Let death sit upon them, let them go quick into the hell, 
for wickedness is in their dwelling and among them. We have to read some of those verses again. From within, evil is present. Evil is present. Uh, let's read those verses again. That's something to write with. You get blessed for reading and you get blessed for hearing. Uh, look at those verses. Give ear to my prayer, O God. Give ear to my prayer. Listen to my prayer, O God. Hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. For they have cast iniquity upon me and the wrath they had hate me. My heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling come upon me. The horrors have overwhelmed me. I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove that will fly away to be at rest. Oh, then I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Don't come back. Just stay out there. Evil is present. <laughs> and stay. I would haste my escape from the windy storms and the tempests. Destroy your Lord and divide your tongues. For I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst thereof. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. Wow. Evil is present. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me. That I could have magnified myself and magnified myself against again me, then I could have hid myself from him. But it was though a man, my equal, my guide, my acquaintance. Evil is present. We took sweet counsel together, we walk into the house of God in company, let death seize upon them, let them go quick into the hell. <laughs> you pray that they're going to hell. Well, people who go into hell, what kind of people are going to hell? Not from our side, from that side. Look what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 24. I have a red light edition. Evil is. Matthew 24. As we come towards the end of time, that's just the way it is. There's an increase of evil activities. Watch this. Matthew chapter 24. Look at verses 4 and 5. Jesus answered and said unto them, Heed that no man deceive you. Look at verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. They know it. They're lies. They're not. Many shall come in my name, saying, They're Christ. They're Christians. And shall deceive many. Look at the 11 verse. Evil is present. Look at the 11 verse. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Look at the 24th verse. Look at the 24th verse. For they shall arise false Christ and false prophet and shall show great signs and wonder, insomuch that if it were possible to deceive the very elect. Can you see that? Look at the 24th verse again. They shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonder in so much that if it were possible they deceived the very elect can you see that? look at Mark M-A-R-K is Mark Mark chapter 1 evil is Mark chapter 1 I feel very sorry for the uninformed Christians. You're meat for the devil. If you don't know, you're going to be at a disadvantage. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mark chapter 1. Let's pick it up with the 21st verse. And they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day they entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his drunken, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as a scribe. There was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. Now look at this. Inside of the church, evil is present. There was a man in the synagogue with an unclean and he cried out. Look what he said. Let us alone. Leave us alone. Let us alone. What have we? Let us alone. We. What have we to do with thee? 
Thou Jesus of Nazareth, and thou come to destroy us. I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him and said, Come, hold thy peace, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, when he had torn him, cried with a loud voice and came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What new thing is this? That new doctrine is this? That with authority command even the unclean spirit and they do obey him. And immediately his fame was spread abroad throughout all the region round about God. We have to read those verses again. Now he said, Let us alone, leave us alone. What have we to do with thee? In the church, evil is present. He's comfortable before the word. Many, many churches are like that. Evil could live there, could function there. That's a habitation for the evil forces. They can stay right there until light come. Remember Philip went on to Samaria, preached Christ unto them. All before everything is fine. Evil have its way. Look at it. Look at those verses. And he came, went into Capernaum straight on the Sabbath day. He entered into the synagogue and taught. You see, notice the word go forth first. Notice the word go forth first. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper. Huh? And taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine and they taught as one having authority and as a scribe. And there was in the synagogue a man with unclean spirit and he cried out. You see, when the word go forth, he cried out. He can't stay there. He can't stay there. Open the light. He ran. A spiritual cockroach run for cover. Huh? saying let us alone you see you can't take it once the word go for the person who's authorized to give the word the words that they can't stay there they can't stay there huh saying let us alone what have we to do with thee what have we let us alone what have we well let us alone what have we let us alone what have we to do with this see everything was fine playing church day all the time playing the fool day all the time nobody there's authorized to take authority over these evil forces so they have their way they're doing what they own thing singing their own songs on godly song having preaching gospel that have nothing to do with god or supposedly a gospel perverted gospel so the evil spirit could live in that environment it's good he could stay there until the word come to town Ah, uh, look at it there was in their synagogue a man with a own peace when he cried out saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus from Nazareth, and thou come to destroy us i know thee who thou art you see the word will destroy them because the word is quick and powerful and sharp up and he told his sword destroy us i know thee who thou art the holy one of god and jesus rebuked him saying hold thy peace come out of him and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice he came out you see the word went thoughtful came out can you see that hallelujah Look at the book of Acts, and let's see that story with Simon in some of your Acts. Get something to write with and something to write on. Evil is. You see, in the church, it's comfortable, and many churches are like that. They feel comfortable because nobody, they have the authority to take authority over these evil spirits. So they live there, and the pastor, and the deacon, and deaconess, and all them, they're part of it. Not even saved. So they could live there till the word come to town. Can't stay. Acts. Chapter 8. And look at this picture. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. And by hearing, by the word of God, faith cometh. Look at this. Acts chapter 8. Let's pick it up at verse 5. And look at Philip. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the, look at the transformation. As Philip gets to town. Watch this. Look at this. You see, Philip is an evangelist. He's a ministry gift. God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. What for? For the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Look at this here. Look at this. Acts chapter 8. Pick it up at verse 5. Look at this. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. What was the first thing he did when he went down there? He didn't tell them what religion he belonged to, how old he was, how many wife and how many children he had, uh, what color of skin, how much he had. No. He preached Christ. He preached Christ. He preached Christ. I say he preached Christ. As he get into Samaria, he preached Christ. Look at it. He's Christ under them. And the people of one accord give heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracle which he did. Unclean spirit crying with Lord voice came out of many. You notice he preached Christ on things. You notice the same pattern with Jesus. He went in the and he preached the word and unclean spirit cry out. Same, same thing all the time. The word go forth first. I'll confirm my words with sign following my words. Look at it. We'll look at it one more time. Look at verse 6. And the people with one accord give heed unto those things with Philip's sake, hearing and seeing the miracle which he did. Unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of men that were possessed with them, men that were taken with palsy and were lame, were healed, and there were great joy in the city. Now it seemed like the city had no great joy before Philip got to town. Look at verse 9. 
There was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving over them to be some great one, for whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying that this man is a great power of God. To him they had regard because of his long time bewitched the people with sorcery. When they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Simon himself believed also, uh, when they were baptized, he continued with Philip, be wonder beholding the miracle and sign which he did. Now when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. When they were come down, they prayed them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So all the time, he's a great power of God, but they have no Holy Ghost. He's a great power of God, but they have no Jesus. Verse 16, For as yet he were found not none of them, only that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Simon saw through the laying of the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, whomsoever I lay hand, I receive the Holy Ghost. Peter said unto him, Thy money perish thee, because thou was taught that the gift of God be purchased with money. For I, look at that, thou hast neither part nor lot in this, in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent. Well, you see, sinners have to repent. You see, Christian could confess the sin, but sinners have to repent. He not even saved, but he's a great power of God. He not even saved. Evil is present. From the least to the greatest, saying he's a great power of God. Everybody in Samaria, from the governor, go around to the common man in the street, saying he's a great power of God. Evil is present, but nothing happened. Nobody getting healed, nobody getting delivered, no Jesus Christ, nobody followed the Holy Ghost, but he's a great power of God. Is that your church? Is that your church? Huh? Let's read that again. Go back up to verse 9. Let's read it again. Got something to write when something to write on. Read it. Over and over until it gets from your head into your spirit. But there was a certain man called Simon before time in the same city. used sorcery, bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out to be some great one, to whom they all give heed from the least to the greatest, saying that this man is a great power of God. To him they had regard because of a long time he bewitched the people with sorcery. And when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also when he was baptized, he continued with Philip, wonder beholding the miracle and sign which he did. How come he's a great power of God and he's not doing this? Now when the apostle which was Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they said to them Peter and John. And when they were come down, they prayed them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he were found on them. So all of Samaria have no Holy Ghost. But he's a great power of God. For none of them only that they were baptized in the name of the Lord. They laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Then Simon saw through the laying of the apostle hand the Holy Ghost and gave me offer them money. Saying, Give me this power that whomsoever I lay hands might receive the Holy Ghost. Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast taught that the gift of God may purchase his money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of thy wickedness. And pray God, perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and the bonds of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray you the Lord for me. Why didn't he pray for himself? Well, evil people can't pray to God. God hear it, not sinners. God hear it, not sinners. Pray to God to me. Why don't he be and he's a great power of God? How do you pray to God for himself? Huh? Why don't he go boldly to the throne? He cannot because he's not saved. Uh, look at verse 24. He answered and said, Simon said to him, Pray you to the Lord for me that none of these things which thou hast spoken come upon me. I thought he's a great power of God. Uh, evil is present from the least to the greatest in Samaria, saying that he's a great power of God. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. And look at the Apostle Paul. He's responsible for the most of the new covenant churches. In Ephesus, in Colossae, in Thessalonica, in Corinth, in Galatia, all those churches. So he's getting ready to say goodbye to the church here at Ephesus. So he's saying goodbye and giving them some instruction and departing. Look at this. Evil is present. Look at this. Acts chapter 20. And let's pick it up at the 28th verse. Acts chapter 20. Let's pick it up at the 28th verse. Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseer, to feed the church of God which you have purchased with his own blood. Look at verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves. Also of your own selves. Also of your own selves. Evil is present right inside of the church, waiting for Paul to go to start a rebellious bunch. Tear the church apart. Look at it. 
You got it? Also of your old selves, shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw with disciples after them. They're going to start their own church. We had many of them at us. They give the only start their own church. Every one of them fall flat on the face. Says, therefore, watch and remember. At the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone united there with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. We have to read those verses again. I said we have to read those verses again among your own self, grievous wolves. Look at that 28 verse again. Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseer to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter among you not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw with disciples after they are going to start their church. They are going to charge their church after themselves. Therefore watch and remember the space of in the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one of you night and day with tears. Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Can you see that? Second Corinthians, evil is present everywhere. Second Corinthians, chapter 11. Evil is Everywhere. Hallelujah. Get your act together. Time is running out for some folks. Look at this. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Let's see. Look at the 13 verse. Pick up the 13 verse. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, deceitful workers, deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. No marvel that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Look at verse 15. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also are transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. We have to read those verses again. Evil is. As we look at this month of October, when there seem to be an increase in evil activities, the devil and his crowd come out to play. Look at this. For such a false apostle, deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. No marvel that Satan himself, Satan himself, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. There is no great thing if his ministers also are transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Look at this here with Paul. Look at we're looking at evil is. Go down to the 23rd verse of that same chapter. Look at this. Look at this, look at this, look at this reading here. The Apostle Paul. Look at this reading. Look at this. E evil is present tense. This is New Covenant now. We went way back up in the Genesis. We come all through the Bible. Everywhere we see it, evil is always overwhelmed with more darkness than light. Is in the church, in your home, everywhere. Watch this. Look at this. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Look at the 23rd verse. Are they ministers of Christ as speak as a fool? I am more in labor, more abundant, in stripe above measures, in prison, more frequent, in debt off. <laughs> in debt off. In debt off. Well, it could be Christian doing this. In debt off. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one thrice. Was I beaten with rods once? I was stoned thrice, I suffered shipwreck, a night and day I've been in the deep. In journeying, often in peril in water, in peril of robbers, in peril of my own countrymen, in peril of heathens, in peril in the city, in peril in the wilderness, in peril in the sea, in peril among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watching, often in hunger and in thirst, in fasting, often in cold and in nakedness. Beside all these things, that are without that which come upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak? I'm not weak. Who is defended? I'm not burned out. I must need glory. I will glory of the thing which concerning my infirmity. The God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, know that I lie. It seems that everywhere where Paul go is problem. Evil is present everywhere. Can you see that? Go back to the 23rd verse again. And it seems that everywhere he go, evil is present. And he started most of the new covenant churches in Corinth, in Colossae, in Thessalonica, in Galatia. Uh, all these, all these, all of, everywhere he goes, he set up these churches, ordained men and set up these churches there. Oh, look at it. Are they ministers of Christ? Because they fool, I am more in labor, more abundant, in stripe above measures, in prison, more frequent, in debt off. And we didn't want to kill him. 
Christians of the Jews five times receive I forty stripes save one thrice or three times was I beaten with rods once I was stoned thrice I suffer a shipwreck a night and they've been in the deep in journeying often in peril of water in peril of robbers in peril of my own countrymen in peril of the heathens in peril in the city in peril in the wilderness in peril in the sea in peril among everywhere peril in peril and peril and peril, peril everywhere evil is Presence in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and in thirst, in fasting often, in cold and in nakedness, beside all these, in that and without that which come upon me daily, the cares of all the churches. Everywhere. Evil is. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Second Timothy, chapter 2. Is Timothy in the Bible? Yes, it is. Just want to make sure we're in the B I B. L E. L E. Second Timothy chapter two and see what God is saying to us there. Paul writing to his son in the faith, and he made a statement here. We want to extract from this statement. Evil is present. Watch this second Timothy chapter two. Look at verse eleven. Persecutions with an S, affliction with an S, which come upon me at Antioch, number one, at Iconium, number two, at Lystra. What persecution I endure, out of them all the Lord deliver me. Now look at that verse again. Take your time and look at that verse again. Persecution with an S, affliction with an S, which come upon me at Antioch, one, at Iconium, and at Lystra. <coughs> what persecution I endure, but out of them all the Lord deliver me. Yeah? All that will live godly shall suffer persecution. Look at the third, look at the thirteen verse. Evil men and seducers wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We have to read those verses again. I said we have to read those verses again. Second Timothy, chapter third. Look at the eleven verse persecutions. Afflictions which come upon me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecution I endure, but out of them all, the Lord deliver me. Yea, all that would live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Evil men, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Hallelujah. Stay right there in Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 2. And see if you can swallow this second timothy chapter 2 look at the 20th verse second timothy chapter look at the 20th verse and see what the spirit of god is saying through the apostle paul to his son in the faith timothy but in a great house they are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of wood some of honor and some of dishonor in a good house we have to read that verse again. In a great house. I say in a great house. Evil is present. Look at that. Second Timothy chapter 2. Look at the 20th verse. Look at the 20th verse. But in a great house there is not only vessels of gold and of silver. But also of wood and of earth. Some of honor and some of dishonor in a great house can you read how read is thou hallelujah glory to god amen amen in a part two get something to write with and something to write on and hear what god is saying to us in his holy written precious word evil is present the book of luke chapter six luke chapter six I have a red light edition. The head of the church is speaking, and the apostle Luke is recording. God had set some in the church first apostles, secondary prophet, thirdly teachers. After that, he gave the work of the evangelists, and the pastor is last on the list. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 6. And look at this. Watch this. Luke chapter 6. Let's pick it up at verse 12. Luke chapter 6, let's pick it up with verse 12. 
And it came to pass in those days that he went into the mountain and to pray and continue all night in prayer to God. All night in prayer to God. All night. Verse 13. When it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve whom he named apostles. Simon, who is also called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, Matthew, and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, Zelotus, Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. Now think about this, this reading. Evil is present. Now he went into prayer all night. All night in prayer. And when next they come, he selected 12. And one of them is Judas Iscariot. Right in the throne room with our Lord and Savior, Judas Iscariot. Evil is present. We look up in the third heaven, way up there Satan and the angels way up there. Evil is. Huh? We look at that. Now when he come to us, we're coming back here, we want to read this one more time. But look at something here. Keep your marker there, we're going right back there. Look at Big John, chapter 17. We're going back, keep your marker there, we're going right back there. Big John, chapter 17. Keep your marker, we're going back to Luke 6. Big John, chapter 17. And pick it up at verse 1. These words speak Jesus and lift up his eyes to heaven. And said, Father, that always come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Thou hast given him a power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given, uh, thou hast given, thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know that the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Look at verse 4. I have glorified thee on the earth, and have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. I have glorified the work, and finished the work you give me to do. Uh, look at it. O oh, Father, glorify thou with me with the glory you shall be before the world was, and, and so on. But look at this. All that, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Go back up to verse 1 again. The words that I speak on, he speak these words and lift up his eyes to heaven. The Father, they always come glorify thy son, thy son glorify thee. Thou hast given him power over all flesh that he may give eternal life to us, may as thou given. This is eternal life, that thou, I know the only true God in Jesus Christ who has sent. I glorify thee on the earth and I finished the work I finished the work I finished the work with God has given me to do. So God he went up into all night and everything God told him to do, he do. So God told him to select this person here. Go back to six. Go back to go back to to Luke chapter six. All night in prayer to the Father. And he selected these men, and one of these he selected is a percentage of poison. Judas is scary. I finished the work, so he keep him right on. He said, I've lost none, save the son of perdition. We'll look at that in a little while. But look at it. Go back up to verse 12 again. It came to pass in those days that he went into the mountain and to pray. And he continued all night in prayer to God. All night in prayer to God. All night to pray to God. And when it was there, he called unto him his disciples, and he chose them twelve whom he named apostles. When it was day, all night in prayer, day and time. time, time. Simon, whom he also called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, Matthew, and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, Zelotus, Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. So the father tempted you put that inside of there. Can you see that? You will see that, I'm just showing you that. Big John chapter 6. He finished the work. I said, everything you tell me to do, I did. Look at this. Big John chapter 6. Now look at this. Big John chapter 6. Evil is present. Watch this. Still have a red light edition. The head of the church is speaking. And the apostle John, the love apostle, is recording. Look at this. Now we want to pick it up. Big John chapter 6. Look at verse 64. And there were some of you that believe not. There's some of you that believe not. There's some of you that... So some of the people that found everybody didn't believe. Mm. Well, unbelief is evil. Doubt is evil. Because when the children of Israel went to spout the promised land, two of them say yes, ten of them say no. And the two that say no, he said they bring back an evil report. So evil, doubt always have an evil report. So if you don't believe, it's either you believe, they that believe, 
he gave power to become son of God. Those that don't believe, they turn to the devil. Watch this. And there are some of you which believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who, who they were would not, that would believe not and who should betray him. He knew who would believe. So it's not only just do this subscribe, but others also didn't believe. Look at that 64 verse again. And there were some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who they were, who they were, who they were, not just he, who they were that believe not and also should betray him. And he said, therefore, should I, look at, he said, therefore, said I unto you that no man can come unto me except the Father give him unto me. Remember what we just read. From that time forth, many of the disciples, many of the disciples, look at that word many, multitudes, many, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. And Jesus said unto the twelve, will you also go away? So many disciples plus Jesus and plus the twelve, will you also go away? Simon answered and said unto him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and we are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus answered and said to him, have I chosen you twelve and one of you? Haven't chosen you twelve and one of you? Hmm. Have I chosen you twelve and one of you, a devil or demon? And he spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, which should betray him being one of the twelve. Evil is present. We have to read that again. Some of you never seen that before. Just show that to you. Uh, many of them, not just the, from the twelve, but other people who was fallen just went back. In the last days many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Uh, look at verse 64. And there were some of you that believe not, but there were some of you that some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they, who they were, who they were that believe not, who they were that believe not, and who should betray them. And he said, therefore, should I say unto you that no man can come unto me except the Father give, the, the Father give unto him whom the, my Father. And from that time, many of the disciples, many of the disciples, many disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? Will you also go away? Simon answered. Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. We believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said unto him, have I not chosen you twelve and one of you? Have I knew you twelve and one of you? So he chose the devil, son of perdition. He speak of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, who also should be him. Evil is present. Can you see that? Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Well, you see, some believe. Well, you see, what you have there is a divided house. Some believe and some don't believe. You see, Judas is scared, don't believe, but they have other, also other disciples also who don't believe. So the house is divided. And a divided house, a divided city and so on. So look at this. Matthew chapter 10. Evil is present. Look at what Jesus Christ when he was here operating the fivefold ministry as an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, he had the spirit of measure. And right there. But which is worse? Up in the deterred heaven. Satan up there. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Evil is present. There's a day the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also. Yeah. The accusing the brethren night and day before the, our God, accusing our brethren. Think about evil is present up in the third heaven and in the second heaven and in the first heaven too amen because he's the prince of the power of the air glory to god matthew chapter 10 and let's see what god is saying to us there matthew chapter 10 and look what he said here see if you can see if you can swallow this matthew chapter 10 evil is look at the 34th verse Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I have come not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter against her mother. -in -law. Look at the 36 verse. Look at the 36 verse. Put your finger on the 36 verse. Ah, look at that verse. A man foes shall be there of his own household. Ah, a man foes shall be those of his own house. So we're going to read those verses again. A man foes, his enemies, shall be those of his own household. Look at that. Look at it. For think it not that I have come to send peace on the earth. I have come to, not to send peace, but a sword. You see, a sword going to cut, some going to fall on this side. But do you see with Jesus a while ago? Some believe and some didn't believe. You see? Some of these, many disciples went back and followed no more with Jesus. 
Many shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine. That's the signs of the end time. So many, when time of Jesus, many didn't follow Jesus anymore. They went back. You see, so a man house, so some going to believe in Jesus, some don't believe in Jesus. Look at it here. 34, think it not that I am come to send peace on the earth, but I come not to peace but a sword. For I am come not to set a man, I come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against the mother, and the daughter not against the mother-in-law. Look at verse 36. A man for or foes shall be those of his own household. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. But we saw with Jesus. Everybody didn't believe. Everybody didn't believe. You imagine that in the presence of the Almighty God on earth, God with skin, they don't believe. He, the way, the truth, and the life, they didn't believe. I don't know which is worse that Satan, in all the surround God with all his glory and all his power and majesty, everything that this entire universe have to do, he, next to the man who created that, he rebelled. Everything that was made was made by Ove. And Satan was there, part of the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. And he rebelled in that environment. Evil is present. Think about that. But which is what? Now, he on earth, Jesus picked 12 disciples. He gave them power to cast out devil, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. And Judas described, evil is present. A man, four, going to be those of his own house. Evil is. Matthew chapter 12. And look at the 25th verse. Look at the 23rd verse. Evil is. So if you're in a church and you have this there, and go, look at this. Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. So you see, with Jesus' house, you know, some didn't believe. Some went back and followed no more with Jesus. You see, up in heaven, they rebel, not united. Look at it. Can you see that? Look at that, tw look at that 25th verse. Jesus knew the thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house. What about your house? What about your house of worship? Is it divided? Deacon board have part of it, the pastor have part of it, the choirs and they, everybody have their own little pieces going together. That ain't gonna work. I said that ain't gonna work. Look at the book of Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Evil is present. Once that there, you open the door to let evil in. God said to David, through the prophet Nathan, you open the door to let this evil come upon you. You open the door. Just couldn't come. You open the door to let it happen. Cease and desist. Acts chapter 15. And the apostle Paul and Barnabas. Barnabas was very instrumental. He really is mentor. Or when Paul received Christ as Lord and Savior, nobody didn't believe him. Maybe he was the good trickster and schemer, tried to get infiltrate the, the organization. So they didn't believe us. Barnabas is the one who take Paul and introduce him to the apostles. Say he's, he's for real. He's the real thing. So he was then taken to Tarsus. Barnabas, he went back and get him and had him on his wing and sort of walk along with him. But there comes a time, you know, when things we just have to separate. Because when you look at the gospel, you look at the the book of Acts, and you look when it first started off, it was Barnabas and Saul, Barnabas and Saul. By the process of time, it becomes Saul and Barnabas, Saul and Barnabas. Yeah, God started pouring more, anointing upon him, more spiritual gifts operating through Paul. So it wasn't Barnabas and Saul, it was Saul and Barnabas, then Paul and Barnabas. Ah, uh, look at here. Watch this here. Acts chapter 15, evil is present. <coughs> Acts chapter 15, let's pick it with the 36 verse. Acts chapter 15, let's pick it with the 36 verse. And some days after Paul and Barnabas, notice who is first, Paul and Barnabas, not Barnabas. If you look earlier on, you see it's Barnabas and Paul, Barnabas and Paul, no, it's Paul and Barnabas. Let us go again to visit our brethren every season when we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname is Mark. But Paul thought it not good to take him with them, who departed from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from another. And Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, and Paul took Silas and departed and 
and departed, being commended by the brethren, and going to the grace of God. And they went throughout Syria and Sicily, confirming the soul. You see how the contentions, they can't work together. You see, when you have the division and strife, like, let's read those verses again. Barnabas determined to take, to take with him, verse 37, John, who said, Mark. But Paul said, thought it not a good idea to take him with them. And departed them from the working palm pillar. That's some people like that. When you're doing the hard work, everybody disappear. When everything is set, now they have a word from the Lord they want to preach. They have, a, they have a word from the Lord. Paul said, no. When we was doing all the hard work, setting up the church and put up with all the people, lip, you gone and you went home. Now the church said, you, you want to come? He said, no. Huh? Paul thought it not good to take him with them and departed from them to Pamphylia and they went to, to their work. And the conscience was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from another. You see? You see, that's his nephew. Mark is his nephew. He wanted to bring his family. Bring a little bit of nepotism there. He said, no, no, no. You bring no family here. He did, went home to the work. Let him go back. No. And you see, the conscience was sharp between them and they depart one from another. If there's division, we saw that with with Lot and Abraham, you say, let there be no strife between us. You go to the left, I'll go to the right. You go up, I'll go down. You just, you just separate. Let there be no strife. You go your way, I'll go mine. So they separate one from another. And Barnabas took Mark, his nephew, and they go on their way. And Paul took Silas, and they went the other way. Contention. No contention. Acts chapter 23rd. Evil is present. One you have that there, evil is present. So we're going to see that in a while. Evil is present. Once you have strife, evil is present. Acts 23. And let's look at a few verses. Acts 23. Let's pick it up at verse 6. Acts chapter 23. Let's pick it up at verse 6. Look at this. And when Paul perceived that one part was Sadducees and the other were Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee and the son of a Pharisee, and the hope of the rest in the Lord am I call in question. And when he had no, when, look at, when he had, when he when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude were divided. Well, just based, based on what we saw in Matthew chapter twelve and verse twenty-five, a divided house, a divided city. So the Sadducees going one way, and the Pharisees going somewhere else. Verse eight: The Sadducees said there is no resurrection, neither angels nor spirits, but the Pharisees considered both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes and all the Pharisees were part arose, strove. We find no evil in this man, and the spirit of the angel spoke not to him. Let us not fight with him. And look at verse ten: And there arose a great dissension. And the chief captain and the fear in Paul and so on. Great descent. You see the divide. So once you're divided, the Spirit of God is not going to manifest there. You're not going to get the gifts of the Spirit manifesting once you strife and division there. But of course, the Pharisee believe one thing, the Sadducee believe something else. The Sadducee don't believe in angels, they don't believe in the Spirit, they don't believe in the resurrection. And the Pharisees confess both, but there's a dissension. Well, you, every, where there's dissension, you ain't going to have no manifestation in the Spirit. If that is taking place in your church, you have a problem. You're not going to have the gift manifesting. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, special faith, healing, miracles, discerning of spirit, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Once they strive, these gifts is not going to manifest. Once they strive, these gifts is not going to manifest. Because God will be aiding and abetting a spiritual crime. He's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. Let's read. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16 and see what God is saying to us. Romans chapter 16. Evil is present. You could create that environment and you open it up and these evil spirits will just have a way to work. You create an environment for them to work. Romans chapter 16. Evil is. Look at 17 and 18. I beseech you, brethren, that's you, the church, and mark them that cause division and offense contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Anybody that will cause any dissension in your church, avoid them. Can you read? 18. For they are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ by their own bellies and by their words and their fair speech they deceive the hearts of the simples. We have to read those two verses again. Avoid them. Tell you what to do. Some people are strife mastered always in some always in the, always in some disagreement. Can't get them in harmony with nothing. Always strife. Well, you see, once that happened, every evil world gonna manifest itself there. Look at that again. Look at look at this idea. And when I read things like that, remember we keep saying this all the time. If everything that Jesus Christ had done was put in the books, the world itself couldn't hold the book, so they leave that out to leave this in. 
You see, Paul and Silas couldn't get, when you go is this way, I go in that way. No strife. If there's any division, there'll be no manifestation of the Spirit. And every evil work going to manifest itself inside of them. Look at what he said. I beseech you, brethren, this is the church, brethren us. The church, mark them that cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. People just going around, just, just strife masters, just like to be striving all the time. Look at verse 18. For they are such that serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody that did not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, can you read? By their own bellies and by their good words and fair speech, they deceive the heart of the simple. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 1. Avoid them. Evil is present. You create an environment for them to work. You create an environment for them to work. First Corinthians chapter 1. And let's pick it up with the 10th verse. First Corinthians chapter 1, let's pick it up with the 10th verse. Get somebody to write with us, somebody to write on and hear what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. While I'm cooking, I'm eating. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 1, pick it up with verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, again, brethren. You write it to the Romans believer, but now you write it to those at Corinth. Uh, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there is no division among you, that you perfectly join together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You have been, it has been declared unto me of you, of brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contention among you. And now at this I say, that every one of you said, I am of Paul, I am of Apollo, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? I'm a Paul, I'm a Paul of pharmacy, he's divided. Now some children, the white section and the black section and the educated section, the honor cases and, and the, you know, the rich section and the poor section. The house is divided. Let's read those verses again. I beseech, I plead with you. Well, he knows there's a benefit when you get on one accord. There's a benefit. If you're not on one accord, there's a disadvantage. And you create an environment. Evil is present. Once you see that, the evil is, look at it. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, that you all perfectly join together in the same mind and the same judgment, that they had been declared unto me of you, brethren, 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 by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there is contention among you. Now this I say, that every one of you say that I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. <laughs> That's four parts. Each of them, one third each, to cut up the church in four parts. Look at verse, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Huh? How is divided? Can't have that. Once you have that in your church, you cease and desist or do something about it. Can't have that. The book of James. The book of James. Evil is present. The book of James. Look at what you've done. The book of James. Hallelujah. The book of James. Chapter 3. And let's pick up on the 13th verse. James. Chapter 3rd. Let's pick it up on the 13th verse. Who is a wise man and do with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his words with meekness of wisdom. Look at verse 14. But if there is bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descending not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and there is confusion and every evil work. But a wisdom that is from above is first paired and peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, and full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruits of righteousness are sown in peace to them that make peace. We have to read those verses again. You see what you created? You invite the evil spirit to come in there. When you have strife, you just wouldn't get together, wouldn't get along together. As Christians, we all speak the same thing. Look at this. Who is a wise man and you do with knowledge among you? The 13th verse. Let him show out of a good conversation. That word conversation is lifestyle. His works with meekness of wisdom. But if there is bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above. It's earthly. 
and sensual and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. There's the evil is present in that environment. Some places you go, there's like there's some churches that are just all the time, couldn't get along with nothing. Huh? That's when you have the deacon running the church, the deacon board running the church, telling the pastor what to do, the tail wagging the dog. For this wisdom descends not from above, but is peaceable and gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and with good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. The fruits of righteousness are in peace to them that is make peace. Let's turn the corner a little bit here. Genesis chapter 39. Divisions. Evil is present. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Evil is. Evil is. You open the door to create that environment. You could do these things. And evil is present. You put bait for that kind of fish to come, they're going to bite at it. Genesis 39. Look at Joseph at Potiphar's house. Evil is. Everywhere. We look at it all over. We cover all over. Churches, family, striving all over. You create that and create that. Bring that there. You, you did that. If you close those doors, they have no place to come. Don't give no place to the devil. Don't give no place to the devil. Look at this here. In Potiphar's house. Genesis chapter 39. Evil is present. Genesis 39. Pick it up at verse 1. And Joseph was brought down from Egypt. And Potiphar was an officer of, the, of favor. A captain of the guard. And the Egyptian bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelite. And he brought him on to, down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his life. Now, isn't that some, this is our godly man. What are, what are your employers saying about you? Does he look at you as a godly person? Now, here, this, this way back then, nobody saved because when Adam sinned in the garden, everybody died spiritually. These people are operating on two cylinders, and he's from the other side. He's not from our side, he's from the other side. But he's looking at Joseph, he's a godly person. How does he know that? What was, what was Joseph's behavior in Potiphar's house? And I think God put that in to embarrass some Christians. What are people saying about you in your workplace? As you're traveling the train, as you walk the street, as you're in the building where you live. What are people saying about you? Oh, look at this. Look, 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 let's, let's go back a little bit again. And Joseph was brought down to, to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of favor, a captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him at the hands of the Ishmaelite. And he brought him down. And he brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was, was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. His master saw that the Lord was with him. What did he do? He saw the Lord was with him. How did he behave in his master's house? Huh? And his master saw the Lord was with him. And the Lord made all that he did to, to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And served him and made him overseer over all his house. And all that he had, he put it in his hand. And it came to pass at that time that he made him overseer in his house over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house and in the field one man in a godly environment God bless his house and, all, and look at that and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he knew not what he had save the bread which he did eat and Joseph was a goodly person and well favored what about you and it came to pass look at this look at this watch this look at this and came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast eyes upon Joseph and said, Lie with me. Evil is present. What are you going to do when they come for you? What are you going to do? Now here you put him in this position and here evil is there. She cast eyes upon him. He's not there. The environment is created to do anything. Mr. Potiphar is not home. Mr. Potiphar is not home. What would you have done? I wonder if Joseph had fallen for Mrs. Potiphar and they said she'd keep doing at him daily. Yeah? Look at verse 8. But he refused and said in his master, Why, behold, my master had what did not that he, what he had in his house, and he committed all that he had in my hand, and that nothing greater in the house than I, neither had he kept anything from me but thee, because that was his wife. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Here's a young man, when he left home, he was about 17 years old, so he could be about 18 years old, he's not even 20 years old yet, or could be just about there. Think about that. What about you? He's not even saved. He's not even saved. 
but look at evil is present. And every one of you can be tempted somewhere, whether with drugs, with money, with sex, with whatever it is. And uh, what would you do? I wonder if Joseph had fell for it, would God be able to use him later on to run him all of Africa, all of Egypt? Huh? Evil is present. And every one of us can face with these opportunities to do wrong. Evil is present. And they said, this she did daily. But he resists her daily, tell a lie on him, and so on, and so forth. Amen. Judges, evil is present. Wherever you go, evil is present. Judges, chapter 16, and look at Samson. Evil is present. Judges, chapter 16. Hallelujah. Evil is present. Judges chapter 16. Hallelujah. He met this woman at Sorek and named Delilah and so on. But let's just pick up part of the story and see this here. Look at this. Just pick up. You know the part of it from verse 4. He met the woman at Sorek and so on and tell her this and tell her that. But look at this. Let's pick it up at verse 15. Judges chapter 16. Look at Samson. Evil is present. And he said, look at her, and she said unto him, How can thou say that I love thee, when thy heart is not with me, and thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lied? So he have to tell her, he said, you tell me that, so Samson tell the lie that he love her. He probably meant well. But she's there, she's, she's an assignment. Evil is present, look at it. She said unto him, How can thou say that I love thee? So he tell her that he love her. He didn't tell her he hated, he tell her he loved her. And when thou well, look at her, and thy heart is not with me, but thou hast mocked me these three times, and has not told me where in thy great strength lies. And it came to pass as she pressed upon him daily. Isn't the same thing with some with uh, Joseph and Potiphar's wife? And it came to pass she pressed upon him daily with her words and urged him so that her soul was so that look at her, that his soul was vexed unto death. Daily. Evil is present. And of course, he told all that was in his heart, and they come and they cut his hair, and the strength left him, and so on. The strength is not in the hair, the strength is in the covenant. You cut the hair, you break the covenant. The covenant broken, well, the strength gone, he come like other men. But look at it, he told her he loved her. You see, evil is presence. Careful who you tell you love. And look at it, look at verse 16. And came to pass, she pressed upon him daily. Evil. And that was the beginning of the end of Samson. The Philistine come and take him, they take out his two eyes first, make sure he couldn't see anything, they bind him and then they take him down to worship their gods and they bury him in the process of time. They blind him, they bind him and they bury him. Huh? B, B, B. Blind, bind, bury. Amen. Look at Second Samuel, evil is present. Second Samuel chapter eleven. And look at David, man after God's own heart. Man after God's own heart. Man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. All these have facets of revelation. Think about Samson. Before his he was conceived, conceiving his mother's womb, an angel appeared to the mother and said, You're gonna bring forth a child, and this child is going to start to deliver Israel from Philistine bondage, you're gonna be a Nazareth from his womb. Think about that, even before he was conceived. And look what happened. So God have a call in your life also, lots was cast for you. But what are you doing with the lots that was cast for you? Are you taking advantage of it? You become a disadvantage or become an advantage? You get into Satan now because you see, Satan wants to kill you. The other people he don't want because you already have them. It's you he wants. There's a calling on your life. What about you? From if, even before he was conceived, he's going to be a Nazarite. Don't drink any strong drink or any unclean thing because he's going to be a Nazarite. David, from a young child, here Jesse, um, Samuel went to Jesse's house to select a king to replace the first king of Israel, Saul, who fell because he had sinned. And think about it, he went to the house, the first son, the eldest son, second son, the third son, the fourth son, the fifth, right down to the seventh son. None of those sons, but it was David. And look what could happen to David, or it could happen to you. That which was, that which is, that which shall be done, is that which is done, is nothing new under the sun. It's nothing new under the sun. Look at this, Second Samuel, 
chapter 11, and look at David. Second Samuel, evil is. Hallelujah. Evil is, Second Samuel, chapter 11, let's pick it up with verse 1. It came to pass after the years were expired, the time that king went forth to battle, that David sent Joab, his servant, with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the church of Ammon and besieged Rabbat, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. That could be dangerous. I would say, warn him who's at ease in Zion. Get too comfortable. Have a lot of victory, so he sent the defense secretary, that's his nephew, Joab, you go fight the war, I'll stay at home. Verse 2, and it came to pass in the evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked around the roof of the, of the king's house, and from a roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now think about this. Evil is present. When David was in, before he took the kingdom over, he had many wives and concubines. When he come to Jerusalem, he get more wives and come. He had a lot of women, wives and concubines. Now here, nothing else to do, walking the roof of his house. He saw this woman taking a bath, very beautiful. What about all the women? For you to go to the king, for you to present a woman to the king, have to be the best. So he had a lot of pretty women. He had the best. David sent an inquirer after the woman, and one said, This is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. And David sent messenger and took her, and she came in on him and lay with her, and she purified herself of her cleanness, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived. And send and tell David, I am with child. Trouble start. And because of this incident here, David tried to cover it up. Just like you all tried to cover it up. But the eyes of the Lord run thrown for throughout the whole earth, beholding the good and the evil. So David tried to cover it up. Send and call Uriah. And the thing about the Uriah, Uriah, when they look at some of the mighty men of David, Uriah was one of those men. If you read the account, the mighty men of David, Uriah, the Hittite was one of those mighty men that he had in his military forces. And he took his wife. Now he sent to call Uriah, let him go and spend some time with the wife, so he said, the child is your wife own. So Uriah wouldn't go. He said, I'm not going to go to make love to my wife when the country's at war. So I would stay and guard the palace. So he said, get him drunk. So when he get drunk, he'll go. He still wouldn't go. So he said, well, send him to kill. Write a letter, give him a letter in his hand. And he walked in with this death letter to take it to Job, the defense secretary, and Job, he said, put him in the way the battle is strong to get him killed, get him killed. But you see, God is omnipresent, and God is omniscient. He know all things, and he can see all things. So he tell Nathan, go and tell him that he's the man, and because of this, the sword shall never depart from your house. And David had a hard way to go, and a hard way to get there, until the day he died. David died young, compared to the other people. David died 70. David was 70 years old. When you look at Abraham, was 175 years old. Isaac was 180. Jacob was 147. Uh, Joseph was 110. Uh, Joshua was 110. And so on. And many of them lived to be Ben. Moses was 120 years old. David died very young compared to these guys. He died. Ishmael was 137. Sarah was 127 years. He died 70 years. He died a young man. You see, because of that, he said, the sword shall never depart from his house. Evil is present. He had it run. One of his son raped one of his sister. Next son murder was the next son had him and he run from the throne of Absalom. Then Adonijah wanted to take the throne from Solomon and it was a mess in David's life. Look at it. Evil is present. All because of one woman, somebody's wife. Can you see that? Amen. Amen and amen. First Corinthians chapter 5. Get something to write on, something to write on. Evil is present. Glory to God. First Corinthians chapter 5. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Look at this. First Corinthians chapter 5. Let's pick it up verse 1. Everywhere you look, we look at all over, all different areas of evil is present there all over. Can't get away. It's there. And as we come to this time of the year, it's an escalation of it. Mm -hmm. uh, look at it. First Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is not so much name among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. You are puffed up a little rather more that he had done this deed might be taken away from among you. 
I'm verily an absent in body, but present in spirit, and have judged already as though I were present concerning him that had done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a word unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now here's a person in church with his father's wife. Evil is present. Now the, 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 you break a divine law. You break a divine law. And you, you're in the church. He said you, you, you ought to be mourning, crying. He said that he puffed up. Take his father's wife, come into church with his father's wife. Evil is present. Look at it. It is commonly reported that there's fornication and such fornication, not so much name among the Gentiles. That one should have his father's wife. One should have his father's wife. Yes, you know, somebody's wife could be a little pushy. But that the church should deal with it. But instead of that, they deal with it, they let them just keep coming. I say, you are need, out of mourn, instead of you just puffed up about it. Do something about it. Look at it. You are puffed up and rather more mourn that he had done the deed might be taken over from among you. You open the door to let Satan in. You open the door to let Satan in. Just like with David, he opened the door to let the devil in. He said, because of this, what you do, you open the door to let the devil in. Evil in. Huh? Verily I'm absent in body, but present as though I've already judged, as though I have present consuming, I've done this deed in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord, deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Kill him. Can you see that? Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's turn the corner a little more. We have some time. Let's use it wisely. Go back to Genesis and see something there. Genesis. Get somebody to write with and somebody to write on. Look at Isaac in Gera. Evil is presence. All over. Look at that. All you create all these environment you can see. You could, you open the door, let it tell David, you did this. The door was shut, you open the door. This young man opened the door to let him in. You did this. You did this. You did this. You see? Joseph, keep the door shut. You can do what you want. He's not going to fall for it. He's not, and think about it. Look at, look, at, look at these two opposites. David, you look at uh, Joseph under the old covenant, and David and this young man. Now, Joseph was not saved, and he didn't fall for it. He said, no, I can't do this. And she keep pressing daily. This young man is under the new covenant. He's saved. He's a Christian in 1 Corinthians. David now under the old covenant now he only three people under the old covenant had the spirit of God upon them the priest, the prophet and the king so David had the spirit of God upon him and he fell for it so you look at those two extremes with Joseph and with David and this young man here think about it uh, look at it here in Genesis 26 next picture evil is present. Look at this. Genesis 20. So look at about verse 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that with days of Abraham. Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistine, unto Gerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I'll be with thee, and I'll bless thee unto thee and unto thy seed. I'll give all these countries, and I'll perform the oath which I said unto Abraham thy father. And I'll make thy seed to multiply the stars of heaven. I'll give unto thy seeds all these countries, and thy seeds are all nations. They'll be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandment, the statute, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerah. In the middle of all that, he say right there. Go down to verse 12. Isaac saw in that land, received the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. A hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man was great and grew and went forward until he became very great. For he had possessions of flock, possessions of herd, a great half server, and a Philistine. You see? Because he's prospering. You see that same picture with Cain and Abel. You see, Abel is prospering, Cain is not. He becomes envious. He goes near the turn off. You see that evil is present. They said the Philistines, all of them, all of them in the land. Look at it. Look at verse 14. They said the Philistines. <coughs> Look at it. The Philistines. So all the folks in the country, the Philistines, huh? Look at it. And he had possession of flocks and possession of herd, a great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. And look at it. And all the wells which his father's servant had digged in the day of Abraham his father, the Philistines have stopped them up and filled them with earth. 
And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou wast much mighty than See? Evil. Evil is present. All of them envy. You don't want to be surrounded with all that evil because he's prospering. He went down there and he saw and he got a hundredfold. He said, Man, the Philistine envy him. Just like that in your work. You get promoted in your job. Some people didn't get. They become envious of you. Look at this. Look at this. Envy. Genesis 37. And look at Joseph. Look at Joseph. Hallelujah. Genesis 37. And look at Joseph. Look what envy could do. Evil is present. You imagine a place, you, you like Isaac working in Gera, everywhere you turn all around you, all these Philistine envy, you're just surrounded with all these evil eyes and envious people around you. Look at Joseph with his brethren. There's 12 of them in the family. And all his brethren, not his younger brother, Benjamin is exempt. But look at this, Genesis 37. And Jacob dwelled in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generation of Jacob, Joseph, being 17 years old, being feeding his father's flock and his brethren. And the lad was the son of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, the father's wife. And Joseph brought his father the evil report. And Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and made him a coat of many colors. And his brethren saw that the father loved him more than the brethren. And they hated him and could not speak peace unto him. And Joseph dreamed, dreamed, and told it unto his brethren, and they hate him yet the more. You imagine living in a house like that, eating there and sleeping in the same house as that, in that kind of environment? What it's like to be there? You imagine what it's like to be there? You can imagine what it's like. Go down to the 11th verse. You read the whole chapter, but we look at the 11th verse. His brethren envied him. His brethren envied him. But his fathers observed the saying, Go on to the 18th verse. Read all of it, but let's read the parts of it. His brethren envied him. Yeah, because you've been blessed. They envy you. Watch this. Go on to the 18th verse. And when they saw him afar off, this is Joseph, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. You see what envy would do? You see what envy would do to slay him? And they said, one to another, behold, the dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we'll see what shall become of, and the, the beast will devour him, and we'll see what will become of his dreams. Don't you dream in front of your brethren. They become envious of him. Huh? Look at Solomon. We have a few minutes to go. Let's use it wisely. Look at Solomon. Envy. Watch this. First Kings chapter 4. Evil is present. You prosper and you graduate above your class. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't like that. You prospering. Your family doing well. They don't like that. Better know how to submit and resist. How to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to quench all the fiery darts. You better know how to do some of these things or else you're going down. Look at Solomon here. Watch this. First Kings chapter 4. And look at verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much largeness of heart, even as the sand as in seashore. And Solomon wisdom excelled all the wisdom of the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than all men of Etan and Ez the Hezrotite and Hinan and Kalkad and Dada, the son of Mahal. He is famous in all nations round about. And he speak 3,000 proverbs and his song was 1,005. He speak of the trees from the cedar that was in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that spring out of the wall. He speak also of the beasts and of the fowl and creeping things and of the fishes. And there came all the people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all the kings of the earth, which was heard of his wisdom. So Solomon was some kind of guy. Watch this. Watch this, 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10. And look at the 23rd verse. No, he very wise guy. Me all this, look at it, very good, look at it. 1 Kings chapter 10, look at verse 23rd. So King Solomon exceed all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. Go for the next chapter, chapter 11. Look at chapter 11. Have a few minutes ago, let's use it wise. Look at chapter 11. King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughters of the Pharaoh, the Moabite, the Ammonite, the Edmonite, the Zidonians, the Hittites. 
and of nations concerned with the Lord that said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn your hearts after their gods. And Solomon clean to the middle of. Look at verse 3. He had 700 wives and princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned his heart away. So you see, he was very rich, a lot of women, he had a lot of wisdom, he had everything going for him. Can you see that? Now look at this in Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27. Hallelujah. He had everything going for him because of he had a lot of wisdom, a lot of riches, a lot of women. Just like Isaac in Gera, he had everything going. I mean, they become it. Look at Proverbs 27. Paul, Solomon is given credit for writing this. The Spirit of God, of course. Look at this. Proverbs 27. Look at verse 4. Wrath is cruel, anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Mm. <laughs> look at that one more time. Look at that forward verse. Wrath is cruel, anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Because of envy, they delivered Jesus Christ <laughs> to his tormentors, and so on. Time is up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, amen, and amen. You know, amen to that. I mean, you know, what's so amazing? When you see this evil, it was always present. Amen. Always present. You know, and that's and that's God just telling us that is that is always present, but you have to resist it. Yeah, so you don't have to yield to it. You understand? You know, and when you look at it, all this evil activity that is happening right now, it, this have to tell us something. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and God wants us to be aware. But this is one thing my husband always say. You know, my my saying is this: get your heart right with God. Make sure your life is right because guess what? Once you go to hell, and it ain't no coming back. Mm. You know, hell is real. You know, hell is really real. And I mean, you know, it, 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 it's so easy to be set up to fall for anything because why? You don't believe in what Jesus Christ said, but you believe something that a man said. And God has put his word there before us, you know. And evil is always present. Amen. You know, so you have to be aware Amen. We want to give those that are listening an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Bible says, not my wish that any should perish. It doesn't want anybody going to hell because hell was not made for you. Hell was made for the devil and his angel. You don't have to go to hell. All you have to do is to say yes. Not to fill out any form, quit your job, leave your husband and wife, abandon your kids, give up your apartment, change your name, fill out a form, bring some money. All you have to do is to say yes. By saying yes, you leave the kingdom of darkness. You move the kingdom of darkness just by saying yes. Paul and the Damascus wrote, who are thou, Lord? I'm Jesus. What will the me do? Go into the city. I'll tell you what the water is to do. Paul went into the city and Ananias laid hands on him, brother Saul. So from one minute in darkness, next minute in light. If you're already saved, we want you to stand proxy for somebody who's not saved. But if you're not saved, then stand for yourself. Repeat these words I made from the bottom of your heart. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. You said in your holy word. You said in your holy word. Whosoever come to me. Who should ever come to me? I'll in no way cast out. I will no way cast out. But I'll take them in. But I'll take them in. So I come to you. So I come to you. You didn't cast me out. You didn't cast me out. But you took me but in. But you took me in. And I thank you. And I thank you. Romans 10. Romans 10. Verse 13. Verse 13. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord. Who should ever call upon in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. So I call upon your name. So I call upon your name. So I'm now saved. So I'm now saved. Romans ten. Romans ten. Verses nine and ten. Verses nine and ten. With a mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But with the heart man believe it unto righteousness. But with the heart man believe it unto righteousness. So I confess with my mouth. So I confess with my mouth. The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. That he died. That he died. Went to hell. Went to hell. Spent three days. Spent three days. And three nights. And three nights. Just for me. Just for me. Because I confess that with my mouth. Because I confess that with my mouth. And I believe that in my heart. And I believe that in my heart. I'm now saved. I am now saved. I now become. I now become the righteousness. The righteousness of God. Of God in Christ. In Christ. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Five twenty one. Five twenty one. Jesus. Jesus. You represent me in heaven. You represent me in heaven. And I will. And I will represent you on represent earth. Represent you on earth. Jesus. Jesus. I thank I you. I thank you for what you did for me. For what you did for me on Calvary. On Calvary. Shedding your blood. Shedding your blood to redeem. Me to redeem me from the curse of the law, from the curse of the law, spiritual death, spiritual death, poverty, poverty, and sickness, and sickness. Satan, Satan, you no longer my lord. You no longer my lord. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, is my lord, is my lord, and my savior, and my savior. I'll live for him. I will live for him. I'll serve him. I will serve him. I'll study his words. I will study his words. I'll be a good example. I will be a good example for all to see. For all to see. And I thank you. And I thank you. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. 
Christianity is not passive but active. The Bible says don't give place to the devil. When an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walk it through dry places, seek and rest and find and he's coming back. He come back and find the whole empty sweep and garnish. You're going to get seven more spirit more wicked himself and come back to dwell there and your last it is worse than your first. Get busy. Start reading. We want to suggest you start with the gospel according to John. Read the first chapter and the second chapter and the third chapter. Read the first chapter in the morning and read again at lunchtime and at bedtime. Take your time and read it. Don't try to read the whole Bible in one day. As you grow, the Spirit of God will lead you to do other things. Ask God to lead you to a church that will feed you spiritually. Don't go to a church because your friends are going there because it's a church down the block or across the street from where you live. That may be so, but that may not be so. Ask him to lead you. He knows where you need to go. Ask him to lead you to a church where you can grow in the things of God. I've never seen, I'm learning. I've never seen a person receive Jesus as Lord and say we become a worse person. Always a better person. A better husband, a better wife, a better daughter, a better son, a better employer, a better employee. Always a better person because of Jesus Christ. So you could do the same thing. Ask him to lead you someplace where you can grow and become a better person. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time yes, that you have given Lord, us. Thank, thank you for the opportunities Hallelujah. and privileges. Thank you for your son, yes, Jesus Lord. Christ, who make all this possible. Thank you, Lord, for your son, triumphant, victorious Jesus. Yes, thank you're you. are giving in advance all the praise, honor, and glory for everything that you have done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. We thank you for all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Good night. You have been listening to Pastor Randolph Ferdinand, Teachings from the Word. To get a copy of this teaching or any of the other series, call 347-533-4271. 347-533-4271. Like us on Facebook or YouTube at H2C3 Ministry. H2C3 Ministry. Go for the word.